Last month I had the really cool opportunity to go on a train ride down the west coast of the United States. It was my first time taking the Amtrak and I was on the Coast Starlight Rail. And being the true romantic that I am, I knew I had to document it somehow. Picking the correct camera for this trip was a bit hard because I recently got a Leica M3 which had just gotten back from being CLA'd and I also just recently got this Fuji X-T4 that I'm recording on right now and I couldn't quite tell which one I wanted to bring. Even though I've been shooting film for years and I feel like I generally have it down, there's still a part of me that lives in constant fear of just having all of my trip photos be completely wiped out by a TSA x-ray scanner or just my own idiocy and having the rolls go blank. So I opted for the safe route and I brought my Fuji X-T4. And honestly, perfect idea. I wasn't planning on making this video, it just kind of came about and being able to have clips of it is a really cool thing. So I set off from King Street Station here in Seattle, Washington, and I departed on the Coast Starlight Rail, and instead of going directly to Los Angeles like I'd originally planned to, I decided to stop in Albany, Oregon. Like most trips or just photo shoots in general, it takes some warming up. These photos and clips aren't anything super special that I'm super excited about, but it was just about getting kind of into the groove and feeling more comfortable again. And since this is a new camera, it didn't hurt at all. At one point I went into the viewing cart area, which is a super cool like middle portion of the train that's totally glass and a bunch of windows and you can just sit there for as long as you want. The first time I went into the viewing cart, I ran into this older gentleman who had a Canon FE on him, and like a true photographer, he was afraid of any genuine contact with me, so I asked him what camera it was. He said, oh, it's one that's from before you were born, and I took the hint and I left. Now, if you are like anybody in my personal life, you are probably asking the question, Matt, why the hell are you stopping in Albany, Oregon? My friend Justin just moved in, no pun intended, to a new house, and I went down to go visit him, check it out. Justin also runs his own jewelry store. I first met Justin on TikTok at the beginning of the year, and since then, I have basically been doing all of the product photography for him. And we have gotten some really cool stuff, and some of the stuff that we got here in Albany actually worked out really well. That's not everything though. Justin also just got a new dog named Hank, and oh my god, he's the cutest dog on the face of the earth. Originally, I was supposed to take one of the days that I was in Oregon and hit the coast with a friend and go take pictures, but he was having some car issues, so I ended up just hanging out with Justin for the rest of the day, and we hit up this really crazy, beautiful place called Mary's Peak. <laughs> We made it up to the top just in time for sunset, and the pictures that I got at Mary's Peak are some of my favorite that I have ever taken. I don't 
know if these photos are considered like street photography, but they're definitely not just like normal landscape photos. And honestly, it's my favorite kind. Like having people in the frame to be like enjoying and appreciating the views that you're there for, I feel like just elevates the photos. As the sun continued to go down, Hank started getting a bit chilly, so we started heading back to the car. Thankfully on the way down, I was still able to grab some more pictures and the colors in the sky were just gorgeous. That about wraps up my time in Albany. It was a pretty quick stop, so being able to just hang out with friends and see cool spots and try good food was really all I could have asked for. The next day, I just woke up, watched some Nathan For You, found out the Queen of England had died, and then I boarded my train. Now, this next portion of my trip, a lot of people have the same reaction and say, oh my god, that sounds terrible. But honestly, I loved it and I would hands down do this again. Maybe it's just my inner we live in a society, but being able to board a train and bypass TSA and just be around people who are much more willing to talk to you and being disconnected from online and all of that, being able to just watch the scenery go by as you're hanging out in a nice little viewing cart is honestly an amazing experience. There's something to be said about being trapped in a big metal box for 30 hours that makes people much more willing to talk to you. I spent most of my day, surprisingly, in the viewing cart talking to random people that I'd met. As the night kept going along, this guy eventually came in and he just had to tell us about how excited he was at the fact that he got eye covers, a blanket, and a pillow for $20. Shit, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I also took it upon myself to edit some of these photos. Um, I recently created my own preset pack, which I used on all of these photos. And honestly, it streamlined everything super nicely and I'm really happy with how they turned out. If you like how these photos turned out and you wanna get them for yourself, just go to the link in the description, go to my website, I have them listed. Now on the train, I didn't take nearly as many photos as I had expected to, but I am happy with the ones that I got. But also part of the next day was just the space in between the Bay Area and like Santa Barbara and there's just not a lot to photograph. It was dusty, there was a ton of smoke. Probably my favorite photos from the train itself though were when I woke up the next morning in San Francisco and there was this like light orange haze of smoke. Sure, it wasn't a great thought that everything was on fire around me, but you know, life gives you lemons, I guess. While the food on the Amtrak was just like a step above airline food, I would say that the conversations that I had at these meals were at least good. It was fun just meeting random people. At one point, all of us were from different continents, which I thought was cool. Honestly, it was just nice being able to sit down, share a meal with some strangers, and have some fun conversations. Not much happened on that second day. Mostly just ate lunch and dinner and edited more photos. I'm the type of person that will fill my time up with a bunch of random bullshit just for the sake of feeling busy. So it was nice being able to just force myself to look out the window, enjoy the view, and take in the sights. If you have the time to invest into a trip on the railroad, I would honestly recommend it. It is a very unique experience. Maybe you're not gonna do it every time you travel, but being able to take a train and just hang out, I would honestly recommend it. I don't know when I'll get around to it, but my next goal is to ride the Amtrak through Colorado and the Rocky Mountains in the winter time. I just think being able to see all of that with the snow would be a really cool experience. Ever since I was a teenager, I have had a highly romanticized view of Los Angeles. 
No, none of that has changed. My personal favorite movie is La La Land, and that movie has influenced me in a multitude of ways, including this aspect ratio that this video is being shot in right now. It was shot in anamorphic widescreen, which is about 2.39 to 1, and I just really love the way it looks. It makes life look so much more special. I hate to say the word cinematic, but you know, if you're trying to get engagement on your photos on Twitter, there's not a better word for it, honestly. The cinematography in La La Land also has really greatly inspired me, so you may see some of that in these photos that I take. Anyway, back to the photos. I got to LA that same night at around like 10 p.m., and I just went straight to my hotel and passed the fuck out because I only got like two hours of sleep on the train. So my first morning in Los Angeles, I woke up at like noon, I think, and I got the text from my friend Yanni that he just flew in, and so he met me at the hotel and we immediately went and got food. We were staying in downtown Los Angeles and I honestly know nothing about downtown Los Angeles, but we were like a block away from the Grand Central Market where we only ate breakfast there every day. Like it was so nice being able to just walk over in like two minutes and have so much food at our disposal. My biggest shout out is to Jose Chiquitos in the Grand Central Market. There was something on the menu that I wanted to order, but they told me it was out, and I was at the front of a really long line, so I panicked and I asked what they would recommend. And they said a Philly cheesesteak, which after ordering, I was a bit concerned because I was like, ordering a Philly cheesesteak from a Mexican restaurant doesn't sound like a great idea. I much would have preferred to just get a burrito. But honestly, that Philly cheesesteak changed my life. From there, we would Uber over to Hollywood and we would hang out at the LACMA and at the Grove. Most of this day we spent exploring and just talking to random people trying to gauge places that we should visit. One of the people that we talked to was this security guard at the Grove. He definitely told us way too much information and I'm not going to relay any of it to you guys, but it was really fun talking to him. I hope he's doing well. And then eventually we headed back to our hotel and we made a pit stop at this random bar that we found that had some of the craziest architecture I have ever seen in a bar. This first day in LA really encapsulated how our whole trip was gonna go. It was a lot of just wandering around, talking to random people, and getting pictures of random stuff. The next day we would continue wandering the streets of Los Angeles. We would head over to Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills and we would people watch and take street photos. I thought Erewhon was a joke. You'll see a lot of jokes online about the price of things at Erewhon. We made a pit stop because Yanni really wanted some water. We are very spoiled with the tap water up here in Seattle, and LA tap water just wasn't cutting it, nor were we even really trying it. But Yanni needed some water, we went into Erewhon, and very immediately regretted that decision. I'm pretty sure at one point I saw a $20 bottle of water, which is just insane, but honestly, I think the people of Beverly Hills deserve it. I also thought the $30 chili in a mason jar was a nice touch. After rehydrating on expensive water, we continued our journey around Rodeo Drive, and we ended up wandering into a neighborhood in Beverly Hills. One of my favorite types of street photography is just pictures of houses. I don't know if that's considered street photography, but I don't know what else it would be called. It's not architecture necessarily. It is my fallback type of photography. It is my comfort type of photography. I can always rely on it. Now, I haven't mentioned it yet, but one of the main reasons why I went down to LA with Yanni is because I have a friend who goes by Stratos and he is a jazz musician and he just recently moved to Los Angeles. I've known Stratos for about a year now. I met him through photography Twitter 
and he's really talented both as a photographer and as a jazz artist. Um, right behind me, actually, I have his record from his new album, Hohenheim Suites. It's really cool, and I really wanted to go see him perform. After wandering around taking pictures of houses in Beverly Hills, we would Uber to a sushi restaurant to meet up with Stratos and his fiance Julia. And after having dinner, we would head over to a jazz venue called The Mint. Only one vodka Red Bull deep, Yanni and I would quickly be engulfed in the culture of jazz music, and we were blown away by it, honestly. Both of them have master's degrees in music, and throughout the entire show, they unloaded the entire curriculum on us, so filling us in on what is going on in front of us. They taught us about the structure of jazz shows, how it usually starts with a headliner, and then after the headliner is done, it goes to the house band, and after the house band, there is the jam session where anybody can go up and play. I was unaware that jazz music relied on what they call the jazz standards, which is basically a song book that everybody is required to learn. And once you go up on stage, everybody says, we're gonna play Caravan. And then everybody can play to that same tune and, you know, improvise on top of that. This show was unlike any other live performance I have ever personally seen, and it was hands down the highlight of the trip for both of us. The headliners for the show that we went to were the Jermaine Cole Trio featuring two other guests, and oh my god, they were so fucking good. The drummer was so fucking talented. They all were, but the drummer really blew us away. I was super excited about this jam session because I was finally able to watch Stratos perform and it was really cool. We ended up closing out the venue and afterwards we headed back to Stratos and Julia's apartment where I could pick up said record. And that was basically the last night of our trip. The next day, we flew home later in the afternoon, but we mostly just stayed back at the hotel and hung out. Yanni and I ended up stopping at a place called Egg Slut for breakfast. We were a bit reluctant to try it. Every day that we'd gone to the market, the line for Egg Slut literally wrapped around it. So we figured it had to be good and we thought it was worth a shot. And I'm gonna be honest, that was the best bacon, egg, and cheese I've ever had in my life. Um, it's probably going to be the only time I ever spend $8 on a bacon, egg, and cheese ever again, but it was worth a try. And as I mentioned, I did not go into this trip anticipating to make some long-winded YouTube video about it. It just kind of came to happen, and honestly, I couldn't have asked for it to happen any other way. This video just kind of came together because I was really enjoying it. I was seeing really beautiful, interesting things, and it really allowed me to be more in the moment than I would have if this was like a planned out trip. This trip also just came together very last moment, so having it gone the way that it did, I couldn't have asked for it to go any better. I'm super thankful for Stratos, for my friend Yanni, for Julia, for Justin. Without them, I couldn't have done this trip. As for the photos that I took on this trip, I had no expectations going into it, and I'm still surprised with the photos that I got. And I mean that in a good way, like I think they turned out really well, and I think for basically being the first time I've used this X-T4, it was a great introduction to the camera, and I feel like having shot photos and video on this trip, I know how to use the camera a lot better than I started. And this was just my first time in general giving videography a go, so I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the shots that I was able to get. Let me know what you think down in the comments. These are some of my favorite photos that I ended up getting on this trip. I'm curious to know what yours are. I'm also curious to know whether or not you guys would go on a 30 hour train ride. Anyways, thank you guys so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this format as well. Um, I definitely wanna give it another try again in the future, maybe in a more planned out way, who knows but I'm also just trying to get into YouTube more. I feel like there's a lot more room for me on this platform than Instagram or TikTok or Twitter. So let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments. Check out all my links down in the description. I have some pretty big announcements coming soon. So yeah, once again, thank you guys so much and I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon.